Hi there, I'm Jennifer Ferguson with Artistic Painting Studio here in Huntington Beach, California. And this video tutorial is going to take you through the step-by-step -step process of creating the wall that you see behind me called LaBelle. Uh, we are going to be working with Modern Masters metallic paints, a gorgeous collection of stencils, and a fabulous decorative roller. So my inspiration, you guys, is one of my canvases, and I thought this would just make a stunning statement wall. The very background of this, if you guys can see, has the texture here, okay? And that texture was done with the um, tiger roller. So that's the part that I'm going to start with, okay? I just have a basic blank wall that's primed and ready to go, and um, I'm just going to trowel on my favorite product called Texture Medium, okay, and this is by my own brand line called Artsyville Embellishments, and the Texture Medium is just a really nice marshmallowy kind of creamy material that trowels on really nice um, and is easy to roll in. Okay, so I'm starting with the Tiger Roller, okay. I got a couple of them out here just in case one of them starts to get too built up with product and I want a clean one, I've got a second roller. So before you always get going, just make sure your roller's spinning well, okay? And that they're ready to go. Um, I'm just going to just pull it right out of my bucket, put the texture medium on the side of my trowel, okay? And I'm gonna try to keep you guys at an angle where you can see what I'm doing. Now, when I'm doing big walls and I'm hustling and I'm trying to get a lot done at one time, you guys, I do go to a hawk, okay, which is just uh, basically a flat surface with a handle on the bottom so you can put your product right here and just pull right off the hawk. So I'm starting at my ceiling line. Um, so I'm just going to try to get on a nice thin coat and because uh, I'm doing this by myself. I'm only going to be able to trowel out a section so big before I'm going to have to come run the roller through it and make sure that the product doesn't start to dry on me too fast. So, and I'm just trying to get on a thin layer, trying to keep it somewhere around that 16th of an inch to an eighth of an inch, okay? And keeping it within my reach, okay, of an area that I know I can handle and roll. And if nothing perfect has to be about this trailing job, okay? So I've got an area that's over two feet, probably about a little over two feet. And I'm just gonna go ahead and stop and roll at this point, you guys. Now, I can somewhat cheat here because I got the ceiling that raises up, okay? So I could lift up those boards a little bit and get my roller going. And you saw, I did not go straight, you guys, okay? Everybody's always asking, even with doing that, I'm losing three quarters of an inch to an inch at the ceiling line. So I will carve that pattern up to the ceiling line or I'll take my trowel and just soften it out anyway, okay? And I'm gonna go at all kinds of different directions here. I'm gonna overlap. Um, I don't really care. This is just background texture, okay? So all this great different direction and interest is absolutely fabulous for this. So what I'm doing here, because I really don't want to have to sand, or I want to sand as little as possible, is I'm taking the side of my trowel and I'm using it real lightly, but I'm knocking down all the highs that the roller causes. So I still have beautiful texture, and I'm really, really hoping you guys can see that well. Um, but I don't have that real high uh, ridge, okay, from rolling through it that I feel like I'd have to come back and um, sand. Um, and like I said, I'm not worrying about how perfect all this is, you guys. Um, because in the end, nobody really sees how perfect this rolled no matter how you're doing this, okay? 
So again, I have no rhyme or reason for this. I am just going for it, you guys. Now, I want you guys to know this little technique I'm doing right here where I am just lightly troweling over. That's harder than troweling, okay? Because it takes a delicate touch so that you do not come back and eliminate all your work. Okay, now if by chance I did go, say, a little bit more, okay, I flattened out a lot here. Okay, well, how freaking simple was that? Okay, I'm just going to come back and I add a little bit more pattern there. And now I have more interest. Um, and I want you guys to always see, okay, let me get this camera down a little bit on it. Okay, there's no texture here, okay? So when I'm hitting the wall, I'm hitting out here in open land, okay, where there's no texture, so that I don't end up putting a trowel mark in the middle of something and feather in to my work, okay? Okay, we are done with all of the rolling with the Tiger Roller. The wall is dry, and because we use the trowel to knock down the texture, you shouldn't have to sand too much, but you might have to grab either some 120 or some 220 sandpaper and just give it a light sand anywhere where you feel it's still pretty rough. Um, once you're done with that, just take a cloth, wipe down your wall, and then we're going to be ready to actually put some color on here. So I'm using um, Rust-Oleum. Uh, this is their milk paint finish. Navy is the color that I've chosen. And I'm going to put on probably two full coats so I have great full opaque coverage. So as you can tell very easily, when you're painting on a dark color, sure doesn't cover in one coat. It's going to take at least two, possibly three, before I get this opaque and you don't see all the highs and lows in the wonderful paint job. So I'm back at it again for layer number two. So we're gonna get going. Okay, the blue wall is finally painted and a couple of reasons why it took me a little longer than it probably should have. First of all, when you're working with such a dark color, I'm gonna recommend you always to use a gray primer. I should have just taken the time and put the gray primer down. And for whatever reason, I grabbed only the four inch little weenie roller. Okay, I should have grabbed at least a six inch roller. Um, so other than that, it did take me three coats, okay, before I got it as opaque and perfect coverage as I'd want it. So now I'm ready to actually get to the stenciling part and I'm going to be doing a layered stenciling project where I'm going to use different patterns, different colors, and just kind of make it like a, I guess a graffiti stenciled wall, okay? So this is gonna be fun. We are working with Modern Masters paints and I'm grabbing a collection of colors and we'll have a complete list of all the colors, all the stencils and all the tools and materials that we're using um, at the end of the video. Okay, I've got two of my largest stencil designs positioned behind me um, where I've got one high and one low and these are gonna be like the larger designs that are gonna be in the background. So I'm gonna pick some of my lighter colors. We're gonna start with Oyster and Champagne. Again, these are the Modern Masters metallic paints. And I'm gonna show you guys how to dry brush um, and how to do this. To create a dry brush, I'm just gonna pick up some of the wet paint. Um, this is just a serving tray that I have that I've lined with Crescent Seal. So it's giving me a large surface to work the paint into the brush. And then, I know this is gonna feel kind of crazy, but you're gonna go over to that paper towel and you're basically gonna take it all back off so you end up with what's called a dry brush. This is the only technique that really prevents you from seeping underneath the stencil because if you don't get your brush dry enough, it will go underneath. So you can either pounce on the color or you can swirl it for a real soft um, application. And we're, like I said, I'm using champagne which is one of my lighter colors that I've chosen for this project because this really is going to be um, in the background and I'm going to use stronger colors, darker colors um, that are definitely going to pop on top of this. And as you can see, even with a dry brush, you're able to go quite a distance, okay? And I'm just kind of keeping my hand in position where the stencil might not be laying flat just so that my brush doesn't go underneath an area. 
once you have done the section, you can always peek and see if you've got the intensity level that you want, and that way you can make adjustments if you need to. So if you do find a part of the design that you um, want to alter or you're not sure, because there's a very blunt cut to this particular element and I might not want that. So I'm going to use a piece of tape and just kind of soften that angle so it looks more like um, it's curved and not such a blunt, um, a blunt angle to it. So I think that might be more attractive than having that because I'm not sure if I'm going to connect another stencil to it. Um, or just leave it kind of open there. So I just use tape and tape off part of the design if I don't want that. And there is our very first repeat. Um, that looks awesome. It's very light, very subtle, but that is the look I'm going for because I'm going to be building and building. And I have chosen um, light colors, okay? So all the metallic colors I chose were light because I want them to lighten up this dark wall and create a really nice, um, strong contrast. So as you can see, I have placed a couple of new stencils on the wall where I have chose a couple more patterns. Um, like I said, this is kind of like my stencil graffiti wall. So I'm gonna be using um, quite a few different stencil patterns as well as different metallic colors. So I'm gonna to head to the top here and I'm now gonna be using Modern Masters uh, metallic silver to do this stencil with. And again, remember, you're always gonna be dry brushing. So that means you load the paint onto your brush and then you offload it on the paper towel so that you don't have any bleed under on your stencil designs. And again, I'm just using a swirling motion. Um, this is the metallic silver, which can be really strong, okay? It actually has incredible coverage. Um, so I'm trying to use it lightly here so I don't overpower uh, some of the other this other stencil that I already have on the wall, but I want it to definitely cover it because I want the first one to look like it was underneath, okay? So I might go a little heavier over the area that they are overlapping. But all these light colors are gonna pop off of this navy wall really well. So I'm gonna take a little peek here. See how that looks. Oh, that is awesome. What a beautiful design. Okay, if you peek first, you can always determine if you wanted to go back and add something. Um, if you ever want to go back and add, you can just try not to remove your stencil and re or if you have, you can reposition. You just want to make sure every element is lined back up, which sometimes takes a little time, okay? get everything perfectly matched. So it's better to try to keep it in position and just kind of lift and peek and hopefully the tape stays in, uh, in position for you so that way you don't have to reposition the stencil. Okay, so I'm coming in close so that you can get a really good um, look at how the texture is coming alive and that's why we took the time to put the tiger roller in the background and be able to see that um, come through the stencil design. Um, so I've also used um, spray adhesive on the back of this particular stencil because uh, it has so many different elements uh, that can be want to move if they're not all sticking to the surface. Um, so I'll show you, that'll actually be in the, the list of products. So it's just a process of choosing different patterns. I try to find designs that are different sizes as well so that I'm kind of balancing my art. Um, and then you'll always see me do everything in odd numbers. So you'll find the same design in here three times or possibly five times, but you'll never see it twice, okay? It'll always be an odd number. So I'm just gonna continue to paint and you can watch along.
So not only am I taking the time to um, make sure every design is level as far as if it's a design that should be a vertically and horizontally level, um, I am switching to another color of paint. We're going to introduce rose gold. So we have a little splash of a real soft pink. So thanks for hanging out with me. This has been a very fun process and I hope you've enjoyed it as well. If you ever have any questions regarding the process or the products, always feel free to call the studio. We'll see you on the next video.